Uh, we're gonna get into just some, <laughs> we're gonna just get into one of the movers today, bro. And basically, it's gonna be really interesting just because some of these stocks kind of have a natural framework of how they move in different time frames. So that's what I'm gonna show you. But first, I'm gonna start out with um, one of the biggest movers we had today, and I'm gonna kind of just explain why it had such a potential to run as much as it did today. I'm not sure if you saw it, but E A R S. First in the morning, this is gapping up. So that's why it even has people's attention. Gapped up about 30%. Because if you see like the previous day, look how dead it is. Like nobody's trading that. There's absolutely no volume even down here on the bottom. There's a tiny spec right here, but it's not trading any volume. And now some people always wonder, well, how would you even know this is even coming? The first sign or the clue or whatever that why you should have it on your watch list is because it's gapping up. So it's opening up, it's opening up at a higher price than it did the previous day. Um, roughly 30%. So a lot of people might set their scanners to maybe scan for stocks, and it depends what type of stocks you trade, but some people will set it to, <clears throat> excuse me, um, find all the stocks that are gapping up over 20%, 25%, um, just because usually the, those are the ones that are going to be a little more likely to do something. It doesn't mean they have to, but at least these are the ones we want to have on our radar, on our watch list, watching just in case it does make a move. And another thing that I think about immediately when I see something gapping up so when a float is a low float, it's going to be more volatile. So this one was a 6.5 million, which is a pretty low float. And you will notice on stocks like Tesla, um, NIO, uh, just those larger stocks. And Tesla's way larger than NIO, but I'm, ju I'm just talking anything larger than a penny stock. The float is usually going to be like above 20 million, 50 million, 100 million, sometimes 300 million float. And all the float is, is the supply of shares available to the public. So just... Like, you know, just basic supply and demand, the lower the flow, it's going to take less volume to increase that demand in the stock. And then with such a low market cap, yeah. um, it really helps the stock make those crazy percent gains. Um, that's why we don't see stocks like Tesla spiking 100% in a day, because the Tesla's market cap is over 500 billion now, which is insane. It would need that much money to really, mm -hmm. it would need so much money to really get the stock to even push 100%, which is never probably going to ever happen um that's that's one thing about the market cap and the float so i just kind of have those i know that that's in the back of my head right because those are just little nuances you're gonna have to pick up on and you'll see what i mean um a little bit more here um but can you hear me okay so far yeah cool cool okay so now this is picking up and this is a vwap right here i believe it's a little, this little violet line purple whatever color that might be but um that should give us an indication like oh um now let's let's pay a little more attention to this because what the VWAP is, it's the volume weighted average price. And um, when, it's, uh, when it's above the VWAP, it's showing strength. When it's below the VWAP, it's showing weakness. I um, mean, you can see the first 20 minutes of market open, it did absolutely nothing. The stock didn't even move at all. And then out of nowhere, we're getting green candles, green candles, green candles. We're getting a nice push with volume coming in. And then we see it gets rejected right here. So one thing is you don't really want to be pulled into this first move unless you know you're going for like a quick scalp, a quick in and out, and you see the orders moving. But a lot of times you can kind of just wait to see something that you like on the graph. Wait, wait till some type of pattern, wait till something you feel good about or you with your eyes see some type of opportunity that you want to execute on. So you can see it getting rejected right here and then it pulls back. Go ahead. Quick question. What's up? Uh, what, what time frame is this on? Like five minutes? So this, no, you're, um, this one's a one minute. Sorry. Um, I'll use the one minute and also the three minute in tandem with each other a lot of the time. But when I'm looking for to find my entry, I'll use the one minute just so it's a little bit more precise. And this is going to come just more with when you're just in the market, you're going to see a lot more of these kind of movements of the candlesticks. And you're going to be like, oh, that looks familiar. And you'll, you'll, you'll get more of a feel for the market. That's why it's kind of hard to really directly show people and like teach them because after a while you get more of a feel. You, it looks, you recognize it. You, you create and build an eye for opportunity. That's really the best way I can put it. But right here you can see that it gets rejected right here cool has a pullback but look it didn't go back beneath that vwap which is a good sign and again some people were probably like buying this selling here um buying the dips selling at the tops but no one really knows that any of this is really about to break out crazy like it did for today nobody knows that so when you see people posting um, about these big gainers or big runners, or even myself, if you ever see me post screenshots about specific moves, a lot of the time, it's not that I knew that's what was going to happen. It's just the fact that I saw certain clues 
to where that was possible, there was a possibility that that could happen. It set up like a really nice breakout type of pattern. And um, if, if I zoom in here again, you can kind of see, do you kind of see this ascending triangle? If I kind of put another, it kind of gets squeezed into that corner. Can you kind of see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. So it, it was showing a type of uh, breakout formation. It was showing something like that. So it doesn't mean, again, it doesn't mean it has to break out or, or do anything, but we want to have eyes on it. Another reason is because like we spoke about before, it has a 6.5 million float and that's a pretty low float. So it's not going to take much volume for this thing to really start running. Also, it's a low market cap. It's going to be more volatile. So that's one thing we can look out for. So this is probably a better trade that we might want to take because not only is it just showing a pattern, you know, this, this pattern can happen on Tesla, but it doesn't mean anything has to happen um, because we, we do have to consider certain criteria for it. One big misconception that a lot of people have is they're like, oh, this is a breakout pattern. Um, I can just trade this every time I see it. And then they realize they're not going to find any sort of consistency because it's not just that, yes, it has a pattern, but there's a setup and there's, there's um, little bits of clues and criteria behind it. One, we have a low flow. It started to increase volume really quickly as well. Um, third, if we look at the news down here on TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim, you can see that it was something COVID related. And I don't want to get into all the specifics, but you can see there was also fundamental news released about this specific stock. And one thing I don't want a lot of beginners to get confused is they see something have amazing news, a, a super cheap stock, and then they buy it and they hold. And I just want to say is I'm not going to tell people what to buy or sell or how long to hold or do whatever um, you want to do. But one thing is that penny stocks, most of them are going to eventually go bankrupt, no matter if they're releasing extremely good press releases every single day. Um, that, that's, that's for one. I'm not saying all, but I'm just going to say for most, because a lot of people get tricked into buying these and holding these because the company release will, will release some type of amazing news and that's not going to be very long lived. But back to, back to the, this little area right here. Um, this area again was important because you can see it get rejected here, it comes back up, gets rejected again. Um, and then it finally has the breakout. And again, just like it has a catalyst, the catalyst is a reason for why this is even moving or people are even watching it, which was the fundamental news that we just talked about. And we found that right here on TD Ameritrade. Second, it's a low float. Third, increasing volume coming through. Fourth, it showed a breakout pattern. So factoring, um, put, taking into account with all these factors that'll help you be more confident in taking a specific trade. Because if you don't have a catalyst, you don't see the increasing volume, you don't see any of this, you're not gonna have that much um, confidence to actually take the trade. And again, even with all of those factors, the, sh the trade still doesn't have to go your way or the stock doesn't have to do anything you want it to. So that's another thing people need to realize. Um, but right after that, and I have another YouTube, uh, I have a TikTok video I literally made last night and I'll probably clip this and put it in between there as well. But I talked about um, when you miss the initial move, some people may have missed this break um, and you don't really want to start feeling FOMO and you don't want to chase any strong move to the highs or the lows. You don't want to chase a move um, that went um, really strong in either direction. What you can do is you can wait for the break, see if that level holds, right? You want to see if it can hold above this level, that which would be ideal. Not all the time will it hold perfectly on the level, but you can see if it's going to hold this level. And as we can see in the consolidation, it held its level made a second push. And then throughout the day, you know, it just kept making higher, higher highs and higher highs, dips, pulled back, whatever. It's just the fact that after these initial moves, really um, getting in around these areas is really just chasing the stock at this point, to be honest. So that's why it's really important to find those little clues, find those little catalysts and reasons for why the stock can take off in the first place, because the people that are chasing up at these highs, at these highs, at these highs are the ones that's going to lose money because what happens to a lot of people is they're late to the move. They actually see the, the move or the stock makes the actual move. They get in and then they feel, wow, why every time I get in, the stock goes directly against me. And then they think in their head, wow, if I just do the opposite of what I'm doing, I'm going to make money. So that's one huge reason. And again, I can just speak from personal experience and myself getting into the market and when I first started. So I kind of understand um, where a lot of people's heads at, but I just want to say again, if you miss the move, you miss the move, wait for a pullback. Um, and then also just define your risks. But I know that's kind of a lot. Um, that was kind of a lot, and I was talking a little fast, so I'm going to try and slow it down as well. No, but, no um, good man, keep going. Bet, bet, bet. So, 
and I resonate with that fact, like of like missing the move and it, it turns into chasing it rather than yes. like you reacting to it and like you are expecting it to do something. Yes, exactly. Like, yeah. You kind of have to see the move before it happens. And I, I don't want to say that too, because I don't want people to try and start predicting things and then getting themselves in situations that they don't want to be in. But there's certain things you kind of have to see ahead of time. You have to kind of, for lack of a better term, you kind of have to be able to see around corners. And that's going to really help your progress in your progression in the market. You have to be able to kind of just see around a corner that's not being shown yet. But again, you just have to take everything with a grain of salt. But um, just from this right here. From yes. Your experience, like, do the major moves happen in like the first few hours of the market? Mm -hmm. So, um, the, so it's going to be the first two hours of the market, um, which is going to have the most volatility, and which is every all across the market, it usually has the most volume the first, I would say, hour or two, and then it usually calms down around midday. And then the last hour of the market, it doesn't always have a lot of volume, but it's called power hour, and it'll have more volume usually. The uh, last hour of the day tends to have more volume, and the first hour or two of the day tends to have the most as well. So people that are placing, I would say, more day trades or looking for specific prices to get in, most people are trading the, the morning of the market. Most of the volume was in around until the first two hours of the day. And that's typically how it's going to go. Gotcha. But, yeah. And real quick, I just want to bring it back to here. Um, you can see, look at this little pop in the pre-market. And then you can see this little pop here, little pop here, and then a breakthrough. Um, now I'm going to show you kind of a multi-day runner. And now this is going to be more on a large scale. So it's, we're going to be using a larger time frame. And I'm going to pull up a couple examples. But okay. just keep in mind that framework where it kind of pops and drops, pops and drops, hits a specific level, drops. And then once it breaks, it's high, it really breaks out. CBAT, I believe that was a multi-day breakout. I'm going to go on the year chart now. And let me take off these indicators because they're kind of in the way. So you see how I had a line on the other one? And look how I'm on a bigger time frame now. Do you see kind of similarities here? Yeah, the, the um, multiple pop-ups. Yeah, the pop, the drop, the second pop, the drop, and then it kind of just does its thing. And then it breaks through its resistance. Literally very 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 similar price action just on a larger scale so just different time frames so you can see that a lot of these little patterns happen repeatedly over and over again on every single time frame if we go back to and look i'm going to go to the year chart on ears and no, there's nothing and that's another reason why it's such a good long because there's no overhead resistance either that's actually one of that's a huge um, point i didn't even mention there is no overhead resistance to stop this stock from coming down. there's It's just air up here. There's no stopping it until people just turn around and start selling it. But real quick, I'm gonna go back to CBAT. That's a good point. See that. Yeah. No, no, would you say like, no, there's no like ceiling? No overhead, yeah, there's, they, exactly, exactly. There's no ceiling, there's no overhead resistance, nothing to slap the stock back down or create some type of aggressing, aggressive selling pressure. And another reason for that is because EARS, um, if you're a short and you know what you're doing, you're not shorting this at all. Like you're not touching this. I mean, that's the last thing. That, I mean, that's, that's like self-inflicted, like, like that's just suicide. <laughs> right. That's just suicide. Yeah. There's, there's nothing to stop the stock and yeah, it could turn around, but what are you, what are you basing it off of? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so, and again, if I go back to CBAT, this is a year chart. This one would be a multi-day breakout or a multi, I would say kind of a multi-month. This is set up last month and then finally broke out this month. And then EARS, if we go to, this one happened on a day time frame, a minute time frame. it set up in the day and broke out in the day. But CBAT, it's different. This one happens on a larger scale. Does that make sense though right there? Same type of kind of concept, same type of pattern. Just Did larger you monitor time frame. that as it was happening a couple months ago, or is it CBAT? Is like, yeah. yeah, yeah, and there's there's a lot of these multi-day breakouts have been happening so much lately. You see all these like, um, they're they're pretty common. So say the stock was pushing up against this line right here, you mm -hmm. would then the reason why you would know this is a potential breakout is because you would go to your day chart. If mm -hmm. you were just stuck into this one day one minute time frame, you mm -hmm. wouldn't even know that that's coming or there can be a, a massive push. You wouldn't even know that if you don't zoom out, go to a larger time frame, see if anything in the past is setting up for something now. But that, that's the difference. These breakouts can happen in, in different time frames. That's just what I'm really getting at. Gotcha. And then again, you can see on EARS, this one happened in kind of the micro things, the 
a different time frame. This, this breakout happened in the one minute chart. When a stock is hitting a specific price point, whether it's a support or resistance multiple times, just know at that specific price level, decisions are about to be made. And then now you might ask, how can I base my decisions around that? Okay, let's take ER, EARS, for example. We can say, okay, it's, it's hitting that price points multiple times. And again, it's easier to look after the fact that it's broken out, but um, let's just say it's hitting the price point multiple times. Am I gonna sell and take, am I gonna sell or am I gonna get in? What factors would give me the confidence to decide to go long on a stock or short on a stock? The fact that I know this is a low flow increasing volume, there's a catalyst, all those things like we talked about, that's gonna make me more confident in my decision. But again, it's not the fact that if it hits multiple price points and it hits it again and finally breaks, it's gonna break out. It's just the fact that again, there's gonna be decisions being made at that price level. Oh, so you can make a watch list as well. I have another video talking about it, but you can use a scan feature right here on TD Ameritrade. You could just go here, pick the last price, um, pick the minimum volume that you would like. I like to do um, minimum 2 million volume, probably minimum, but sometimes three depends what I'm looking for. But for the most part, this is a generic scanner. And then over here, I have the stock chain. So anything that's gapping up over 20%, 3 million volume, minimum $1, maximum $200 and look, scan. Boom, ears is right there on the scanner. Shit, okay. And for that stock last price, what did you put? Um, a minimum a dollar. I personally don't like touching anything under a dollar. Some people trade them, different strokes for different folks, but <laughs> it's not, it's not my style or my cup of tea. So yeah, just small caps is my niche. That's what I would just say. Got you, got you. And then All I right. personally primarily, yeah, I personally, I primarily like to short. So I like to short into resistance. So I will say, when ERS, whenever it does spike up again, and whether it's a week or two weeks, a month, two months, I'm just saying, if one day this gaps up and it's trading around this $5 level, mm -hmm. I'm probably going to short it. I can call it from now. I'm just saying, because it, it's, it's the same repeatable actions. Now there's, now there's overhead resistance like we talked about. There's no, there's no ceiling on this one, but now there is a ceiling if it spikes again, which is this day. It mm -hmm. created a resistance now, so which now will offer a good opportunity to short in when the opportunity comes. Got you. And then like, just one question to throw out there for anyone like watching, uh, for beginners, would you recommend, I know like you're not supposed to go into a trade with pre preconceived notions or expectations, but when you're beginning, should you only like have one opportunity that you're kind of looking to react to like a buy opportunity? Yes. Opportunity? Yes. Like basically having your plan, like a pretty specific plan and then you're right, just not right. trading unless you see it. Right. 110% only trade when you see the plan and the specific opportunity that you see if you see something breaking out but it wasn't your plan or anything like that i just i wouldn't even touch it if i were you um especially with people starting out i think it's extremely important to be able to um just know what you're looking for because if you don't know what you're looking for you're gonna miss it and then you're gonna chase it and then mm -hmm. that usually never ends too well so yeah i think you should kind of know what you're kind of looking for for sure Okay, got it. And if you don't see it, just don't trade. There's no big deal. It's just because we get opportunities so much. Opportunities are going to come and go all the time. I mean, EARS might spike again next year, December 1st, and literally make a massive run. That's just how they are. There's opportunities all the time. So, <laughs> and again, I, I'm, I ain't no, I'm no guru, no, none of that. I'm just a dude that likes stocks and been trading, and I don't mind helping you.